Hello and Merry Merry Christmas from Tim at AlphaWolfTrading.com. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Hope you have a wonderful holiday. Wish you and yours a uh, fantastic holiday. Be safe. Have fun. Spend time with loved ones and make the best of it, right? That's what it's all about. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get right into the stocks to watch for trading and investing for next week five in 10 minutes and actually going to get a little bonus too. Uh, this is not one of the stocks, STVF. This is a little cannabis stock. Uh, and I do think there are some interesting looking cannabis stocks out there. I was just looking at this. I actually got a call suggesting it goes to 10 in the next couple of months. Pretty interesting call. So we'll see if that actually uh, happens. It actually has a pretty decent looking uh, daily chart. Got a little volume on Friday, but it is worth kind of watching. Could be a day trading opportunity. So I guess this is a second I guess this is a bonus stock isn't it um, all right so let's get right into the list of stocks to watch for next week I'm gonna start out with GLW why do I like GLW well I like this for a long-term hold consideration or investment at play and uh, could be a swing but really a, it's a thick stock almost a billion shares in the float uh, just saw a, 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 a video on some some of the glass that they have for the inside of vehicles you got uh, CES coming up here in Las Vegas uh, in the first part of January and I think you're gonna see some pretty cool products out of GLW and this thing has been consolidating for a while after a very nice run-up all the trend lines are in a uh, you know for lower left upper right you know on a pullback the 31 and change uh, potentially this could be a good entry look it could pull back to thirty dollars and fifty cents that'd be a great entry I think for a long-term hold consideration it's just a really good looking chart lower left upper right I think they've got some great technology and one to consider for your long-term hold portfolio um, let's go to the next one on the list which is another one to consider for the long term this is my investor cap and this is more of a value play now there was a positive article out of C in seeking alpha uh this weekend and i happen to like everything the guy said in the article does that mean that this stock can't go lower it does not mean that there has been insider buying by the new ceo and just to show you that you know where there are levels of potential support that I'm looking at this could pull back to $14 and change you know there is an analyst that just came out with a $15 price target if if it broke below 14 it could hit $11 I mean that is possible um, but I think this is in an area that is uh, a, a decent place to start looking to just build a position it's oversold um, it's held up really, really well, even in the face of, you know, major announcement of layoffs and, and, uh, you know, these price cuts and all the negativity that's out there on the street, it's held up pretty well in this 1750 area. So I think if you start to build a position, look, there could be some tax loss selling he heading into the end of the year this year. Maybe that breaks it below this area of support. That's possible. But I will be looking to take a position probably in GE before the end of this year to start building a long-term hold position. I think, uh, you know, GE is not going anywhere. It's a big, thick stock, 8.7 billion shares in the float. You know, uh, don't expect it to make real dramatic moves higher uh, real fast. Takes a lot to move the stock, but, you know, maybe. You never know. You never know. So I, I think here, I don't think you can get hurt by starting to build a position in this in this area. All right, uh, let's go to Mark, M-A-R-K. So, you know, this is a lower float stock. It's uh, in the AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, some interesting articles being put out and uh, some, some uh, interesting uh, potential partnerships being announced. We'll see what happens with this. This is a small float. You know, they kind of got uh, some financing behind them last week. And uh, volume is actually picking up fairly well. You know, looking for a break over. This thing's had an amazing run already, but it has been consolidating really well. 
Look, on a pullback to the $7 area, could be a great place, $7.50, $7. Could, could be a great place to look for a bounce play, a little short-term swing. Uh, on a break over $10.70, $11, I think you could have a good scalp opportunity if you get some real volume. There's traded 3.8 million shares on Friday. This could be one of those low floaters that gets some uh, action next week. You know, next week, expect that you're going to see you know, some tax loss selling, right? At the end of the tax loss selling, heading into the new year, people dumping their dogs. But, uh, and and um, you could see some low floaters that make some, you know, good trades, uh, trading opportunities next week because a lot of the pros probably aren't even trading. So it'll be uh, interesting to keep an eye on a stock like MARK, either for a day trading opportunity or... Uh, you know, I actually like this on a, on a for a swing or long-term hold consideration, higher risk because of the float on a pullback into the $7, $8 area. I think that's a good place to maybe look to uh, take it for a bounce. All right, INFI. So nice little pop on Friday. And I'll tell you, one of the things I'm going to share with the uh, pro members here in a little bit is there are several sectors that I happen to, to, to like uh, the look of right now and Biotech is one of them. There are a lot of pretty good looking charts out there in the biotech world. Uh, and, you know, there's some been some insider buying here on this infi. 500,000 shares by the president at a buck 81 on December 6th. Had a nice little pop on increasing volume. It's not overbought. Uh, 41 million shares in the float. Maybe look for a red to green on this one. You know, you pull back, you test about a buck ninety, buck ninety-five. Uh, look for a red to green move, break above that fifty SMA. Pretty good looking setup there. See if we get any follow through on that move. It just recently had a nice big pop and pulled back. And then you got this insider buying. I, I I think this is is one to take for possibly a higher risk swing, maybe a day trade, just a red to green move. Um, what's next? PTN, got to give the penny play. So there were several penny plays, and there's several that I'm going to share with the pro members that I happen to like. Uh, some of them are in the cannabis sector. We got a big event happening January 1st for uh, California recreational sales, and some of them are in the gold uh, area. Uh, you know, gold has actually had a pretty nice little bounce, and some of the gold mining uh, ETFs have had a nice little bounce. That may come to an end. We'll have to see how that plays out, but. Uh, showing some unusual strength there, and there's a couple of gold pennies that look interesting. And biotech, I already already said, and what was the other one? Oh, minerals and mining. Uh, minerals. So, so, there, so there were several several sectors, actually, that had some interesting-looking penny plays out there. I went with PTN because it is above the 200-day. It's above the 50-day. It's consolidating nicely after a nice little run-up test of the $1 holla. You pull back here, sitting on top of the 50-day, look for a trend line break and another test of that $1 holla. Take that out. $1 takeout can be pretty powerful. So you take out one, maybe you get a test up to 125. That's a nice percentage move from where it currently sits. The nice thing about this, this is also... Uh, the, uh, it is a biotech. It is a, the nice thing about it is it looks like they've got positive cash flow. So there are a lot of things here I like that I like. One thing I didn't see was insider buying. That would have sealed the deal for me, but I can't have everything. All right. So uh, the last one and the bonus, the bonus is... Pacific Gas and Electric. So look... They've got some exposure potentially with these California wildfires. This has had a, you know, they cut the dividend and that really put a hurting on the stock. You know, I don't think this is a long-term dividend cut. I think eventually that dividend will be revisited after they have more clarification of what their responsibility is. This is a thick stock, 510 million shares in the float. It has been destroyed over this California fire. Will, is Are they going to go out of business? I don't think. Are they doing the prudent thing by cutting the dividend? I think they are. I think, listen, if you can get this down here, 
you know, it's completely out of the Bollinger Band. You look for a snapback play. You could get price appreciation. And then if they, you know, if it comes back that it's not as bad as they anticipated with, with in terms of their financial responsibility, you know, they could reinstate the dividend. You're going to see a big bounce in this PCG. So I, I think this is one to keep an eye on for a, a value play. Uh, you know, I'm not saying go all in. I'm saying maybe you take a little exposure in this thing and things don't turn out as bad as uh, everyone assumes and you get a nice little pop in PCG. You get price appreciation and eventually maybe you get a dividend as well. So worth keeping an eye on PCG. And that's it. I'm over 10 minutes. I, uh, I want to wish you a happy, happy holiday season. Be safe. Have fun. And I'll see you all next week.